Hey folks, welcome back. Rob here with another tutorial carrying on with our Chapter S Solitaire ASL. And uh, this time we're going to be looking at different tables that you could use, as well as suspect counters, what that entails. And then we're going to look at uh, activation check numbers, activation, then of course attitude. And here I'm talking about uh, your enemy's attitude, not your own personal attitude, but the position that they take during the course of a mission. So we got a lot to cover. Let's get into it. So there's two types of tables broken up broadly, and they are basic and nationality. Now, everybody uses the basic, by that I mean your friendly as well as the enemy. Some uh, tables that the enemy would use or some tables that the friendly would use are things like uh, mission setup. So this, you need this to determine which board to use and or random number generation. Sometimes you require that for your uh, reinforcements that you may get. Uh, that kind of thing. The rest of this table really belongs to the enemy. So the important ones for this are the activation table and the action table. So again, we're going to cover these in a little bit more detail. On the back side of this, you have what's called uh, a 11 random event table. And this is a series of random events, <coughs> excuse me, that could occur based on whether or not you roll the applicable number during the wind change die roll. Again, we'll cover that separately when we get to that. The second group of tables is nationalities. And here we're talking about the different force that can be generated. Now, when we originally had the original first edition solitaire, we only had uh, a small subset of these tables. We had the US, we had the German, we had Russian partisan, and uh, I believe the British were basic for there. But um, that was it. Now with 2nd edition, they've expanded the table so that all of the major nations, as well as the Allied Minor and the Axis Minor, if you have Armies of Oblivion, are all represented with these tables. So uh, 2024, hopefully we'll see the new Armies of Oblivion, and those of you that are missing the Axis Minors, then be able to get your hands on it. Also missing are the Finns. Now, it was supposed to come out in Hakapali back in the day. However, you obviously know that never happened. And I believe the intent is to include it in the third edition Solitaire when it's released. I would be surprised if it's not. However, if you go to uh, texasasl.com and you look for the fins, you'll find the Solitaire generation tables and random events there. Somebody kindly put them together. Nice professional looking, so it looks just like the other ones. So if you're looking for fins, at texasasl.com. These generation charts... Uh, this German one here is an example, are basically all the same for all the nationalities. The common features they all have are things like this activation check, which is a set of parameters that must be uh, uh, met in order to have a chance of activation. And the rest of it is actually generating units. So you have G2 for squads. If the Russians, it would be R2 for the uh, Chinese, it would be C2, etc. Support weapons leaders and of course your standard guns and AFEs. Now some nationalities like the Germans have self propel guns, some nations do not. We also have recon vehicles for the German and tank destroyers. Again some nationalities may not have these so they'll be missing from your cards but the most of the tables should be the same regardless of the generation table that you're using. And again on the back side you have a list of random events. Um, it's only get one pager for the nation. Now the uh, the back side of this card is only used by you, the friendly side. Whenever it comes to a enemy's random events, you use the back of your uh, uh, tables. All right, so let's talk about suspect counters now. Now, again, in first edition, we only had the three colors, black, uh, yellow, and gray. Again, black was typically your most dominant um prevailing attitude and you would use the yellow and the gray to represent either uh, some units that might be an advanced attitude or possible reinforcements with second edition they also released blue colored suspect counters and green ones again you now have five colors to choose from so you're able to represent more more uh, cases so for example again your primary unit might be in hold in black and then you have reinforcements showing up that would be advanced. Maybe you have allies. They have to be a different color. 
and so forth. Maybe generate a human wave. You can use a fourth color, etc. That's why you have all these colors of choice now. Unfortunately, in Vassal, although I believe the intent is to include those two new colors, yeah, you only have the original three colors. Now, a suspect counter is treated as a non-activated, good order, unbroken enemy unit, which means they are capable of stripping your concealment, even though they're not necessarily activated. They're also considered to be one squad for stacking purposes. Now, you'll rarely see more than two suspect counters occupying the same location. Generally, they will avoid entering a location if there's already two there, because once they're activated, you have a very real chance of generating one or two squads per counter, which would quickly overstack the hex and needlessly penalize the enemy. So as a result, the um, suspects will typically not enter a location that's got uh, two suspects already in it. Any attacks resolved against them are much like other concealment counters. It's treated as area fire. So when it comes to prevailing attitude, there's really only two that we're going to worry about. And that is our uh, advance attitude and hold attitude. Now hold attitude suspect counters will never move and they will never advance in those phases. However, should they be activated and you roll appropriately on the action table, then there's a chance I could move and uh, uh, contribute to their defense or attack. When it comes to advance attitude, again, every movement phase and advance phase, you must move uh, forward. Typically, for advanced attitude suspects, they enter from off board on the enemy board edge and their direct path is directly across towards the friendly board edge. So they walk in a straight line, either alternating hex screen or hex row, and uh, until they either are activated or they exit the map board. Once activated, again, they'll take on that prevailing attitude and then they're subject to action die rolls which you roll for them prior to doing any kind of, of actions. So when it comes to activating units in the prep fire phase of that nationality, you would roll for each stack, each location, will get its own die roll to see what happens. Things to bear in mind are panic. Uh, we're gonna cover exactly what happens when, but um, for elite units, if you roll uh, 10 or 12, then they'll panic. First line of six or eight or 10 or 12, and so forth, you can see them there. If you roll doubles, there's a good chance your units are gonna panic, again, depending on nationality and quality of the troops. Here you can see an example of the hierarchical list as well. If we're in hold attitude and we get a fire command, we have, if no target exists, an armed vehicle moves or an infantry attempts to entrench. Otherwise, it does nothing. So right here is just an example of the kind of hierarchical list lists that the system uses to generate its AI. All right, so that brings us to the actual activation check. Again, I, I think this is one of the more important numbers that you're going to encounter in Solitaire. It basically determines how aggressive or passive you are in your attack or defense, because uh, for example, if you have a high activation check number, where they're more apt to activate. You might want to be more cautious in the way you approach things. However, if you're in, a, say, a wide open farm field, lots of grain, and they have a two activation, you can be much more free with your tactics uh, because the odds of you activating a unit are correspondingly less. Don't get too involved in what's in this chart. I just want you to focus on the hold attitude and the AC. Now the AC, as we said, lies between two and five and a 1 will always be an automatic activation, while a 6, a natural 6, will always be a dummy. So an original 1 and original 6 will uh, either be active or not, and any number that falls in between will be modified by these die roll modifiers to uh, either equal this number and less or exceed it. So what causes an activation? Every Nationality has a, an X1 table called activation check, which lists the specific parameters. And somebody took the nice uh, effort to translate this into Vassal. So here we have all the nations. Here we have the ranges at the top. And then the cross reference to uh, the IT, IFT modifier 
that must be in place in order to achieve that. So for example, Germany has a range out to 12 at a minus 2. If you're at a plus 2 and you're beyond the 2 hex range, a German squad will not activate. That's just an example of how this works. Another way that suspects can be activated is if they are attacked on the IFT, which is such a result that would strip concealment as per normal. So a pinning task check or better, uh, you will have a chance of activating that unit. Remember that suspects are not eligible sniper targets. And any location that is successfully searched and or mopped up will also activate any suspects that are in that location. Lastly, if we have a flame uh, in a location, then the suspect will also activate. And if it turns into a blaze, or for example, when you roll gusts, where it automatically spreads to burning terrain, and you have a suspect there, the suspect would be eliminated. When it comes to long range activation, this is uh, done basically once per unit per move when you meet those requirements. So you're going to get a minus two IFT dyro modifier and you have to be within 16 hexes of line of sight of a enemy suspect counter. If that happens, you roll two dice. If you roll snake eyes, then you've activated a heavy machine gun, possibly a 50 cal if you're depending on the nation, as well as a leader, probably with a negative and likely an elite squad or maybe even a, at least a first line squad. So uh, you got to be careful when you're moving long range. You think you're outside their normal um, LOS. For example, this case, Russians, if you're nine hexes more with a minus two, you would normally not roll for activation, except for a long range activation is a possibility. So just remember that just because the Russians are running good up to eight hex range doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to get hit with a 50 cal and a 9-2 leader. When it comes to advanced attitude, there's also two other ways that you can be activated. And that is if you do in, in your course of your movement or you're advancing, you move into open ground because you don't use assault movement as a suspect counter. You're never going to be able to assault move, which means you're going to uh, be activated if you have line of sight to an enemy. And or if you enter an adjacent location to a friendly ground units for some reason, density of the terrain you haven't been seen yet the minute you become adjacent to a known enemy unit you would roll for activation then as well all right so let's look at a, an example now so we have kiev 1941 we have russians set up in defense again do not worry about this setup or the opposing forces the germans we'll cover all that as we get to it i just want you to stay focused on the ac which again is a three the modifiers that might occur to that, and the uh, result in activation. So uh, as an aside, one thing to remember about Solitaire is you're really going to use your half squads to good advantage. Um, they're, they're great for busting concealment. If they die, it's only one victory point, which is a much cheaper loss than losing your whole uh, leader stack with your uh, heavy support weapons. So you're going to be using a lot of half squad scouting. Uh, for this purpose, again, we're going to assume everybody's in command, and uh, we're going to start off with the movement phase. So turn one is the German movement phase. The first thing that's going to happen is this half squad's going to enter this hex, and immediately we start checking lines of sight to see if anybody can see them. Now, we already know that F5 can see them, so that's going to be the first one, but we must look at other options, just on the off chance. Nothing there. Uh, there's nothing down here. Again, these level 2 buildings would block any line of sight from back here. We might have possibility over here. Nope. And here. Again, it's only on a first level, which is not enough to see over that level 1 house. So right now, we only have the one unit that's subject to activation. So the first thing that must happen is the long-range activation die roll. So you just roll two dice. As long as you don't roll a snake eyes, in this case roll a seven, we're fine. If we had rolled a snake eyes, we would roll immediately on the squad table, generate a heavy machine gun, and, and they would have a leader as well, which again would just be a really bad start to the day. So we failed the long range activation. Now we can do a normal one. Do we meet the parameters? Right now the Russians have minus two modifier at a range of eight hexes or less, well within our five, so we would roll for activation. Uh, another aside, by the way, is the um, 
SA, uh, the Solitaire ASL Dice uh, extension, which you can get. Highly advisable if you want to play ASL or Solitaire, just because it records the different kinds of rolls that you're going to be making. So here we want an activation roll, so we have a 1. Again, let's look at our modifiers. We are in a stone location, it was a minus 1. We are at level 1, so that's another minus 1. Nothing else applies. However, we are on the city board, so we have a plus 2, which uh, negates the minus uh, 2. So we have a flat 3 or less. Now, because I rolled a 1, obviously a 1 is automatic activation. Uh, however, it's important again to remember these cumulative die roll, how they play in, and that's why we just went through the exercise. But because of roll the one, we have an automatic uh, activation. So what do we activate? Again, we look at our table here, and we look at our uh, MSRs for the mission. Again, don't get too involved, but basically we get a plus one on this table, uh, this A1 table. So we get to roll two dice, add one to it, we rolled a six. All right, six generates a squad. Now, when you look at this table here, you can see this is the uh, possible results you might get. Because this mission gives us a plus one, we can generate anything from a three up to a 13 for enemy units. When it comes to things like half squad, um, again, there's notes on this on the side. Basically, if your nationality will not be able to deploy like the Russians cannot, you'll replace it with a full squad. So any nation that cannot deploy, whenever you see half squad, you'll replace it with a full squad. Should you roll a gun, then you start rolling on the different tables of the nationalities to generate what kind of gun. If you start having activations in prohibited locations, such as a artillery piece on an upper level, typically it is treated as a null result, or in some cases, it might, uh, MSR might ask you to re-roll. Same thing if you um, activate a self propelled gun on an upper level of a building. Obviously, that can't exist, uh, and so then it would be a uh, NA result. All right, so we've generated a squad. Let's bring up our Russian table here. And what kind of squad do we generate? We generated a roll of five. So we look at our table here now. Rather blurry, poor scan job on my part. But uh, you can see the date here, 3941 has a plus two, which we would then add to that so that we get a uh, total of seven, which gives us a 447. Right, take our suspect, get rid of it, we put down a 447, and we immediately first fire. Now because uh, it's only a 447, obviously it's outside uh, normal range, so it's going to be halved, so it'll be a 2 down 2 attack, which is a 4 on the 2. Four on the 2 gets us a 1 morale check. So we do our morale check, uh, we pen, so we're stuck in that location, and we cannot move any further. We also put down a residual fire, one firepower, in that location. Now we have to move our next unit. Again, without using any kind of concealment, we're going to we're going to uh, just move normally for a total of one. Again, we start checking lines of sight. I uh, thought that was in, but no. Uh, there, this one is in. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Too many blind hexes for this level one to see. Actually, you couldn't see anyways because it's only level one. If it was a level two, there might be a chance. So again, you check every location that has a suspect. This is a free line of sight check that the enemy is allowed to do prior to rolling for any kind of activation. So because this unit here can see him, or excuse me, this unit here can see him, obviously he would have lost any concealment. And we roll for activation from him because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're within the eight hex range with a total of minus two. Again, the first thing we must check for is long range activation. Very close. We got a four this time and not a, uh, but we still did not get snake eyes. Remember for long range activation, it's only a snake eyes that count. So now we do a normal activation. 
All right, we roll a three. And looking at the modifiers, we have a city board for plus two. All right, looking at the modifiers, we have plus two for being on a city map board. And nothing else applies because we're in a wooden house. So unfortunately, that three normally would be a activation is not in this case. So that is gone. And our unit is free to carry on. So we go for two. Again, this unit now is within range, so we can uh, subsequent first fire before we do any other line of sight check. The minute that this unit becomes not in good order, uh, you stop rolling for activation. So just remember that as well. So first thing first, he's already activated, so we'll subsequent fire him. So he'll be on the two table down two. <laughs> so he cowers, so he's on the one table, but uh, that should be a K. All right, uh, zero on the one is a one K, yep, so he is foobard. All right, and uh, because it's only one firepower, there won't be any residual. So uh, we've exhausted this guy's fire, so that's great. However, our two half scouts or half squads have not really done a lot of cloud busting. We've eliminated one, two suspect counters, and that's it. We still have these other ones here that we have to worry about. Again, because they're pinned, uh, yeah, they would not be able to see. Uh, we now have to look at other units to continue our assault. So here, we're going to sacrifice a 4, 6, 7. Again, we're not going to use any kind of assault move. We're just going to move normally for 2 which will make this modifier a net zero. And for Russians, it is a four hex range at a zero or or, uh, or less. So we have a chance of activating you. Uh, we cannot fire you again because you're already a uh, uh, coward and nobody else should be able to see. You might be able to because you're on a level two, but you're at a seven hex range with a, with a uh, plus zero. So to be seven hex range, it would have to be a minus two. So there's no chance of anything else activating. So we can start with him. Again, our modifiers, we're in a stone building for minus one. We are on a level one for minus two. And we have a friendly unit within two hexes for a total of minus three. We add the plus two for being in a city, which gives us a net minus one, which means a four or less. And we'll have an activation. So I rolled a two. Again, what do we get? We add one to this, remember, because of the mission MSR, and we get a five. A five will generate a squad leader and a support weapon. So let's look at this activations for a second here. Now, you see where it says fortification, and it has a superscript of six. Uh, if you are advanced attitude, which our suspects are not, but if you were, that would constitutes smoke if that unit is capable of firing smoke because most Russian units don't except for assault engineers if I were on the advance and I rolled a fortification it would be a nil effect same when it comes to guns in upper fortified locations if I fail to roll a fortification which for a building is going to be a four or less um, then the uh, If I roll a 4 or less, then I would activate a fortified building level, which means I could have certain kinds of guns in those upper locations. If I fail to roll a fortification, then the gun will be any in this case. Of course, when you have things like self-propelled guns in upper levels, obviously that's uh, no, uh, no enemy. So in this case, we have a modified 5, which gives us a squad, a leader, and a support weapon. So once more, we look at our Russian table. Quickly generate our rolls, so squad, leader, and support weapon. Squad is a two. Nice. All right, so we have uh, uh, two plus two. Remember, because of the dates, 39 to 41, we have a modified four, which is still enough to get a four, five, eight, which is pretty crazy given the year. Uh, our leader is going to be a modified, uh, well, a natural eight. However, the year will bring it up to nine. But we do have a MMC that's elite, so we'll cancel that out. So we're going to leave our 8 as it is, which means we have a 7-0. And then we look at our support weapon. We have a 3. So we just cross-reference the 3 with the uh, support weapon and the year. Again, 41. 
and a three gets us a light mortar. Now we're inside a building and we have a light mortar, so we could uh, give the 458 a light mortar or we could just ignore the result. In this particular case, because it's a 458 and a leader up in the building, uh, it's probably not much point to give him a mortar. You can always choose to overwrite the, uh, the tables um, depending on the circumstances. So in this case, I would not waste a light mortar with him. However, given the circumstances, maybe you want to uh, um, move, uh, maybe you want to keep the mortar for some example. Say there's a lot of woods around, you need that minus one for air burst, you might want to keep that mortar. But I'm going to refuse it for this one here. So first things is, is we do our first fire. So here we have four firepower, modifier is zero because the non-assault and the woods cancel. So we just do four straight up. We get a 10. 10 on the 4 is not going to be anything. Yep, missed it by a lot. And so we put down our 2 residual. And we can continue moving. So we go for 4. Once more, we check to see if we can do any other activations. Uh, we could subsequent first fire him. This unit will not be able to see because the building blocks line the site nor will anything else. So it's only this unit. So let's um, get an automatic fire command. Let's fire him again. So this time we'll be on the 2 table, flat. This time we rolled a 9. Again, a 9 on the 2 is not going to be anything. Um, so we put a 1 residual in that location, and basically this unit is done. So now we've exhausted all of our move, and uh, we're forced to stop. I could CX if I really wanted to, to move to C4 to see what's in here. However, uh, it's a very good possibility of activating something I really don't want um, and not in a position to deal with it at this point. That's basically an example of activation. Now, this is activation in the hold attitude. So let's look at an example of activation in the advanced attitude. All right, let's flip the tables. This time we're going to do what one of those uh, meeting engagements I was talking about. Basically, these forces entered from off-board, the friendly ones as well, and at some point they had line of sight to each other, and the game was starting from that point. So right now we've already got one turn of movement out of our yellow suspects who are in advance attitude. We've also got some black ones that are in a hold attitude, so they're not going to move, and they're pretty well going to be out of most of the action. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the uh, Russian movement phase. Uh, we'll assume that these guys receive no action and we're just going to move our suspect. So every suspect in advanced attitude will always have the following. They'll always get six move. Will never be increased by anything except for road bonus should all their travel be along a road. They don't use bypass and uh, they don't counter exhaust. So basically you have six movement factors, much like a cloaking counter, to move forward. Again, your trajectory will typically be from the uh, enemy board edge at the top all the way across to the friendly board edge at the bottom. And you just move in a straight line. So we'll start off with this one here. Again, north is to the left. So we're just going to move him six. So there'll be one, two, three and a half, and then five. He does not have enough move to go into E4, so he must stop. Our next one, we go 1. Again, we check for line of sight, too much grain, and this unit has this tree in the way so they can't see. We pay 3, 4, and then 5, 6. Again, he's out of move, so he must stop. Now this one here, he's next up, so he goes 2. Again, he does not use bypass. He pays 3 to go into the road, at which point he will become known to this unit here. All right, so we'll do a quick line of sight. We do not clip the grain, so it's going to be a minus two. So the first thing that's going to happen is this 468. Uh, assuming he gets in command, is going to uh, attempt to shoot two firepower minus two at this suspect. So first thing is, is we roll for activation. And in this case, I roll a six. That's not good enough. Let's do it again. Uh, for this mission, by the way, the, um, the parameters that we're looking at are black suspects are a two, 
yellows and the advance are on a five. So basically anything but a six will mean that they activate. Now the only modifier that could possibly apply to this would be the um, uh, minus one if there's already an activated unit within two hexes. This is not a village board, it's definitely not a city board, so the only one that might apply would be this one here. So again, anything but a six and there's probably going to be activation. So let's roll that one again. We'll ignore that six. This time we'll keep the two. The two is activation. So we look at our Russian table again. Uh, let's see what we get first. We roll a five. Now, again, because of the modifiers for moving, um, advanced units always get a minus one to the roll. So I rolled a five, which comes down to a four. And barring any kind of mission special rule, this is what we're going to activate. So we're going to activate a squad, a leader. Again, here's that fortification and a support weapon. Now, unless we generate an assault engineer, which is not going to happen, uh, we can ignore the fortification because we do not have smoke capability for the Russians. So we roll for the squad, a leader, and a support weapon. So we go squad, leader, support weapon. Bring up our Russian uh, chart. And uh, this time around, it's going to be in the 44 scenario. So none of these modifiers will apply. So the squad is a 6, is a 447. We have a 9 for the leader, which will be a minus 1 because of 44. So we'll have just a 7 0 again. And we have a 10 for support weapon, and 44 will give us no result. Uh, gives us no result here. So we have a 447 with a 70. All right, and now we uh, declared our first fire. So uh, we're going to fire the two firepower down too. So we cower because we do not have a leader, so we'll be on the one table with a four. Which gets us a four on the one is an NMC, and the squad is final fired because it cowered. All right, so we said one MC. So the leader is broken, and the squad is fine. Now the squad has to take a task check. And it's fun. Again, the mortar could fire as well. The uh, broken unit and the 447 still count count as moving or a different unit firing. So if I wanted to, I could engage them. But I'm, and for this case, I'm not going to. So then we move on to our next unit. Again, same thing. We go one, we go three, at which point he would become visible. Because there's only plus two for grain. And uh, one for the wood, minus one for non-assault is a net plus two, line of sight hindrance, so we can easily see him. So this one is activated as well. Again, anything but a six, because we have a unit within two, it would be a minus one to the five, so uh, we're still good. Activation, so we got a... Um, now, here we go. So we have a... 12 which is modified to 11 because we have um, uh, minus one for advanced attitude so that 11 gives us two squads and remember russians cannot deploy so this half squad is replaced with a full squad so we just generated two squads in that location squad squad uh, a 10 and a 7. Again, we look at our Russian table. We have a 10, which is a 527, and a 447. So a 527 and a 447 are generated. Now, because my mortar wisely chose not to fire at these ones, it can fire... Uh, on there, those guys. So remember, we have a plus two for line of sight hindrance. So mortars are base seven, which means we have five or less to hit. All right, so we have a hit, and we've maintained rate of fire. 
Now we can fire on the uh, 8 table with a minus 1 for air burst. So that gives us a 6 on the 8. It's going to be a 1 check. So the 447 is fine, and the 527 is broken. Now, because remember again, they expend a 2 move, I could fire again since I maintain rate. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to fire again. This time I'm acquired. And uh, now it will be a six or less to hit. So again, same number, I rolled a three, and I also maintain rate of fire. So my mortar is hot. Now I fire on the eight table again with a minus one, and that gets me a nine, which is a pinning task check. So nine on the eight, um, and he's fine again. So the four, four, seven is uh, free to keep moving if you so chose. Typically what happens is once you've activated these units, they stop. If this was uh, an AFV, for example, it would still be in motion and um, subject to those kind of vehicles. Well, I'm not going to touch on the vehicles right now. Well, again, we'll get to those when we get more in depth with the activations and units. So that's an example of how you would activate a uh, advanced attitude suspect. All right, so that was a relatively quick look at tables, suspects, uh, activation check numbers, and attitude. And uh, hopefully I didn't skip over anything too much. Again, I probably could have belabored the point a little bit more, but I think you got the idea. And we're going to be using this as a base moving forward. So you're going to see a lot of activation rolls, a lot of attitude uh, adjustments and such, and uh, all that good stuff is coming up in the future. So next up, I'm going to touch upon the command and control aspect as well as action tables for the enemy, what happens when you panic. Uh, really interesting. Again, I, I put it right up there with the activation check number for importance in the game. Without command and control, your units are basically panicked and they can't do squat. So uh, looking forward to seeing that in the next video, and we'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.